Welcome to the Brian Mixing System training video. The Brian Mixing System mixes solid de-icing chemical with water and agitates with air in order to create a liquid chemical that can be used for de-icing on airfield surfaces. De-icing with brine offers significant cost savings over traditional liquid de-icing chemicals. Bobby will help us go through the brine system and show us how to use it. The brine mixing vein uh, system. In the process is pretty much you get a bag and put it in the hopper uh, and put the hopper over the hole, put it in there while you're circulating water. You want to get your water filled up to the correct height before you start putting the product in there and while you're circulating it kind of mixes it uh, as you're going and, and put it in there. That the fill height then? Uh, not necessarily. For two bags they figured out it was 50 and a half inches of water in the tank. Mm -hmm. So like over there when I drained that down to put over here there was five inches left in there so we raised it up to 55 inches or 55 and a half inches or whatever. The system is designed to mix the brine. Um, it's designed to circulate from the tank back up to the tank or from that tank to this tank and vice versa, this tank to that tank or this tank so you can circulate uh, that. It's designed to suck from the trucks if you need to pull your product back out of the truck and put it in the tank. I guess you guys do that at the end of the season. And it's designed to put into the truck. Um, there's a, a, a north and a south hose. You know, this is the north side. That's the south side. Uh, and this is the, the fill hose. We're going to have a different system here soon for holding this hose up out of the way so we don't drive over it and stuff like that. But all your valves are pretty much just here. They're, they're marked with this for that. Um, there's some arrows on here, directionals. This is the suction from each tank down at the bottom there. Uh, there's two valves down there. Uh, you'll have these closed, have those open, whichever truck you want to suck from, and then you open your line, it'll suck from that. And then here's a, a series of four valves to open the return line going back into each tank. Uh, tank one and tank two is labeled on there. And then if you want to pump out of the truck, or pump out of the tank and go to the truck, there's the north hose and the south hose valves on there. Uh, we're currently working on a different uh, filtering system that'll catch stuff when you put your product in the truck it doesn't block your uh, sprayers. And there's the pump. A uh, couple of drain valves on the other side. On the top there there's uh, airline. It goes in and agitates. It's like a little whirlpool or bubble bath in there. Uh, really agitates it really well. It is ran off a compressor on the other side, which if you try doing both of them for very long, it's just gonna blow all your air out. So, so that's more for like when we're mixing, if we yeah. get a whole bunch settled on the bottom, you can blast it with air and it, get back up in the floor. It does an extremely well job at mixing this. And then there's a water fill on each tank. <coughs> the bigger size is the, the water fill and you can go up there and open it to fill it up to the height that you need when you mix it. Uh, if you're just doing one bag mixture, it's uh, half of the 50, it's like 20 and a quarter, inch, yeah, or 25 and a quarter inches and stuff. 25 and a half inches of water per one bag, one full bag. So, it is pretty, uh, pretty simple to use. Uh, we'll have some signage up later on when I figure out how to attach it to that without being in your way when you open it and slice your hand open. Uh, so I guess the next thing is we can just uh, start putting the, the mixture in there and get it in, right? Uh, the mixing process doesn't take that long. Once, once it's in there and you're blowing air and you're actually circulating that, it doesn't take that long at all to mix it and get the get your thing that just uh, the, takes about 45 minutes to an hour to fill one tank up for two bags uh, on that. Okay, so as you guys can see that it, it takes uh, a lot for this uh, forklift to go up uh, to load your product into the, the hopper and then get it up. So what we've done now in the second bag, so I can show you, 
is we line the mast up in between the two uh, bar joists up there. They give you a little bit more headroom and you don't have to worry about being watched all the time on that. And just another thing, the only product that you should be using in here is this new deal product. It's the, it's the blue uh, crystals uh, for this. And uh, the other things that we didn't mention on, on the hopper here is we have these levers that work on both sides of the hopper. So if you're loading this one or that one, the person in the middle has access to uh, uh, open that. And if you uh, come to uh, say your product is hard or something, it gets up in there, just tap on the side of the, the box with a rubber hammer or something like that to get it to flow. But it looks like everything flows pretty good as long as the product's not wet or to go in there. Uh, another thing I didn't mention at the beginning is that when you're dropping your product in there, you want to have that tank circulating within itself uh, as you're doing it. The air doesn't need to be on at that point. It can agitate later on. Once once you're done dumping your product in there, it's kind of mixed up. That air going in there, and that'll uh, stop putting so much you know dust in the air when we do that. Did you guys have any questions about what's going on so far? It seemed pretty pretty simple uh, how it's going on. Okay. Well, we can get up and, and load this uh, this hopper up and uh, put it in there. One of the other things about the bag, you see how we open the chute at the bottom. Uh, that works a lot better to keeping dust down than it did actually cutting it open. So you don't want to cut them open, open the chutes at the bottom uh, to go in the hopper. Okay, we're well, gonna go back in there, we'll, we'll get this hooked up. We want to make sure the safety chains go on the forklift mask uh, so it doesn't come off during the operation. First, we will need to fill the hopper with solid chemical from the bulk bags. In order to fill the hopper, we'll use a forklift. Be sure to watch the clearance on the forklift boom and watch getting too close to the ceiling. The ring can be pulled on the bulk bag to spill it into the hopper. Once the hopper is full, it can be forked into position over the top of the tank opening. Be sure to watch the clearance between the top of the forklift boom while you lift the hopper. To open the hopper bottom, pull the handle either way. Before the chemical can be used on the air field, it must be diluted to a specific gravity of 25. Throw a drop on me either. This is tested by taking a drop of the fluid and putting it on a digital hydrometer. Well, when this thing's recircling, it's coming out here. So I just reach in and get a little sample from there. And then, you know, you can float your hydrometer in it. 15.7. What are we at? 15 minutes now, about? Uh, I would say it's about half diluted right now. What's the magic number we need to get to? 25 is what we're shooting for. Okay, and we're at 15.7 now. Right. I want to say This chart from New Deal Chemical shows a breakdown of the water and solid chemical needed to achieve the Pacific gravity. 
So we got the yellow valve is air, the red valve is the water. The smaller pipe has air, and uh, the larger pipe is the water bill. Okay. And then the same is true on the opposite side. Yeah. Got red for uh, water and white, yellow for the air. Okay. And over there we didn't talk about it, but there's the switch for the pump to turn the pump on and off. Okay, so this is our uh, brine pump switch right here on the back wall. And so is the brine pump on right now to mix everything up? The brine pump is on right now. If you come over to these valves and you open them up and you're not getting any water, back over where the uh, water softener is, there's a valve that comes to this and it's, it's, it's labeled. Uh, you got to turn that on because we're, we're going to keep that closed unless they're making uh, tanks. So, but we'll leave that valve off over there in case this ever has a problem or somebody hits it. It's not just blowing out here that it's shut off back gotcha. over by the okay. Valve. Thanks for watching this training video on basic brine tank system operations.